Hi everyone, John here, KX4O. I am concluding my Pactor WinLink tests. I wanted to give you a quick uh, overview of the files that I've collected so you can look at them later on, see where I've had success and where I've not. Uh, it's been a mix, but uh, I've been talking to people on the QRZ.com and I have been putting all my test results here on the hamradio.me graphs WinLink tests. The URL will be in the description below. And the latest stuff has been over-the-air monitor tests. I wanted to show you a little bit about the tools that I use first. Uh, but even before that, we must look at the modem itself, which is the Pactor modem connected to a TS-480 transceiver. There's the P4 Dragon wired into the DIN plug of this radio right here. I also use an SDR from time to time to help find it and I'm now hearing a signal. Let's go see if we can if we get lucky here. Sure enough the PMON thing I was getting ready to show you how to start is actually detecting a signal right now. KY2D is trying to connect. Let me turn it up. Here he comes. Pactor level 3, speed level 3, and the common delimited data you see there is the binary, or basically the information the modems are being asked to transfer. And let's see what we get here. I think all that was was a uh, user checking into a, a machine somewhere to see if there was any messages and there probably weren't any. That was a little too quick for otherwise. But uh, while we're here, this is a terminal using PuTTY into the P4 Dragon modem. I am using the PMON feature. You can see the uh, various functions are here. The PMON is, of course, Pactor Monitor. I always set it to PMON mode 3, which means Pactor is 1, 2, or 3. I have tried 4 a little bit, but it's hard to find anything to decode in that particular uh, Pactor 4 mode. Uh, I have heard it, but I've not been quick on the draw to get it quick enough. PMON hex 2, and then PMON start. I want to hear some more. Let's see what we get. This, by the way, is from a uh, dipole outside of my home. So this is mid-Atlantic region kind of coverage. Works very well. And busy, busy they are. There's some big data coming through now. That most might have some data in it. Let me turn the volume down here and let's have a look. I'm looking for a specific string or a, a series of characters. Sure enough, there it is. See this right here? 0, 0, 30, 30 here. That is the marker that begins a, a encoded frame of compressed data. And this is the, uh, the beginning of the frame counter. That's the marker flag, 0, 2. That's the size of the re following number of bytes. If it was a 3, it would be 3. If it was an FA, which is a lot of times seen on the WinLink, that's 250. But 00 is 256. So we would see that until the next time. It would repeat itself, and it would end in this, 04E1. This right here is going to be a good capture. So I'm going to uh, move this file over to the server and show you how it works. Okay, the file has been moved over to 2020. It looks like I need to make a 02 directory, but it's in the 01 directory at the moment by mistake, but nonetheless we'll do it. 0201. This is literally the file that comes out of the terminal session from the Dragon modem. 
and you can see where I've done some uh, typing in before. It's basically everything that the modem spits out. These are the results of the PMON command. For every frame that happens, you get this report. And there's a consistent format in the report in that uh, two nibbles of data, with or without a comma, always show that when there's a data of the payload to be to be uh, saved. So that message we just saw is all the way at the bottom here. And the thing I'm looking for is the start flag that some of these systems use. This one uses six 30s in a row with a zero zero ahead and, and behind. And there's also one that's just a zero zero three zero zero zero. I key in on both of those. That's how I search for the position in the file. So let's go to the actual server where that file exists. Now I'm going to grab my tools. So I have a cheater script for that. So copies of my tools are now in place on this particular new directory. LZHUF, which is the compiled program that does compression and decompression. It's decades old, but still works. Uh, we can have a look at that file right here. And it's the same file. We can go look, look for the data. Say 003030. There it is in the raw format. Now I use a program called parse data. It's an awk program that I wrote. Very simple. It all it does is it takes the file and looks for those cases where there's two nibbles from 0 to 9 A through F by itself, complete line, or with the comma, suggesting there's more than one per, and it just prints them out into a, a never-ending spaceless stream of nibbles. Now if we look at PMON parse you'll see I have a routine that looks for any file that is in my format which is anything dial.txt dial being the frequency as I encode that in the file name and it runs all this stuff on here it basically just spews the file into parse data .awk and then in turn takes that to xxd and produces a binary file and then it runs hex dump on that so we can have a good look at it from the web viewer and then this is where I do the searching for any number of these flags uh, the, the, the series bytes the 30s in a row or the single 30 uh, originally I had thought that those were patterns on WinLink and DTS or NTS but it's not true it seems to be just two different ways of encoding the data and then finally I take the any of the uh, found markers in their memory position and I write the binary file that represents the compressed file that was transferred by the modems. So let's see if it works. I can do PMON and it looks like it found two. If you can see this 639 and 551. Let's see what we got. Uh, maybe just one. So let's go back to the website. A little bit easier to view there. And you'll see now if I hit refresh, a lot of new files in place that I just created. Um, there's the hex dump. Well, that's the hex dump of the binary file. There's those 30s in a row. So if you look at the address 0280, we're very close to it. It found it at 27F. That's that's what this means. It's the position in the the master binary of where this message resides. We click on that, and that was literally just sent live moments ago. It's a. I guess that's. I guess that's WinLink. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's a decoded message. It was encoded with LZHUF. I d I monitored it. I saved it. I decoded it and now it is a decoded file so that's not effectively encrypted this is KX Pro have a good day